Hello everybody. Guess what? It's a speaker build video. That's right. My very first set of custom built speakers. So a little bit about them. Um, the drive units are all from Dayton Audio's reference series. So I've got a pair of their reference series, six inch mid bass drivers. They're both four ohm drivers wired in series. So I get an eight ohm speaker. And then for the tweeter, I'm using one of their one inch soft dome tweeters. Crossover unit is a pre-assembled crossover that uh, Dayton Audio uh, produces and it has a 2K crossover point. Looking at the driver specs, it really made the most sense to me. Essentially, when it comes to speaker cabinets, uh, there's a couple different ways you can build them. You can have a fully enclosed uh, speaker cabinet, which is really just a box with uh, speakers in it and some foam for dampening. Um, or you can port your speaker cabinet. So porting them allows some of that air pressure and some of those sound waves to actually escape the cabinet, resulting in an enhancement in bass frequencies. Uh, transmission line, it takes that one step further and you actually create a tunnel for that those sound waves to travel through before they get to escape the cabinet. That usually results in a more focused bottom end enhancement because the amount of time it takes for those sound waves to travel through the cabinet will ultimately determine at what point those low frequencies are aligning when they meet up out front. So uh, may have butchered that explanation, but hopefully you get the point. Anyways, let's get into the build. So for a speaker of this size, I was able to get all the material I needed out of a single sheet of eight by four by three quarter inch thick MDF. Hot tip, if your hardware store has the ability to cut that sheet down, I definitely recommend it. Makes it way easier to transport. So to make the cuts as even as possible, I designed the cabinets so that the top, back, bottom, and inner bracing that make up the transmission line were all cut to the same width. So I, I got my sides, and then when I was done, I set my saw, it was about five and a half inches, and then I was able to rip all of those pieces all at once, and that ensured that everything was going to be the exact same width. So the exception to this was the bottom plate, the pieces for the speaker stand and the front baffle. All of those match the total width of the speaker cabinet, which was seven inches. So one of the things I wanted to do was shave about an eighth inch off of the inside edges of that front baffle. So the reason to do this is so it sits inset into the speaker cabinet to ensure a really nice seal between that front baffle and the speaker cabinet. So once all the pieces are cut, I can start gluing on the acoustic foam. So the foam itself, what I'm using, it's a one inch thick egg crate acoustic foam. You can find this stuff online. Very easy to find, very cheap. So to do this, I'm using a spray on. It's actually from Gorilla Glue. This stuff worked really, really well. So you just spray it on the MDF and you spray it on the foam. Wait about 30 seconds for it to get tacky and then you stick them together and the foam won't go anywhere. One thing to note as I'm applying the foam is I'm leaving a space so I can glue the crossover unit right to the base of the speaker. Also, I'm leaving a space at the back because I'm going to be drilling a hole for the speaker binding plate. So the reason for adding foam is it acts as an acoustic damper 
inside the speaker cabinet. And what that'll do is that'll absorb any of the high end energy that's coming back into the cabinet and also helps soften some of the resonance inside the speaker. Now that all the foam is glued, it's time to actually glue the cabinet together. So the trick here is lots of glue. I don't care if glue is spilling out from the seams. What I care about is that I get the best seal possible. As for drying time, it says it's good after about an hour. Honestly, I didn't trust that, especially with the amount of glue that I was using, so I kept these clamped together for about eight hours. Next is the driver cutouts on the front baffle. To do this, I'm gonna use a router circle jig. So I start by measuring out the center of where each driver is going to sit. Then I drill a pilot hole for the router jig. So I want my drivers to sit flush into the baffle. So my first cuts are gonna match the diameter of the drivers about a quarter inch deep using a three quarter inch flush bit. So once those cuts are done, I then use a straight cutting bit and remove the material that remains on the inside. Now, depending on the depth of your router, you may need to cut on the inside and then flip the baffle over to cut out the remainder. So once the driver holes were cut out, I took the front baffle to the router table and I did a half inch round over on all of the edges. Now, the reason for doing this is apparently sharp edges have a negative impact on high frequencies that are traveling across the front of the baffle. So next, we cut out the porthole. So now the baffle is all cut. It's time to sand it down super smooth and get it ready for paint. So a trick that I learned with painting MDF is you can't just apply paint to it because MDF is very porous. And if you put too much moisture into it, it'll actually start to swell. So I found one of the best tricks online was to actually use a sealant. The idea is you want something that's gonna get on there that's gonna dry really quick and create a protective layer. Once that's done, you can then apply your paint and get very smooth coats. Next step was to apply the wood veneer. This is my first time working with wood veneer and I have to say it was really difficult. This is literally thinly shaved wood. It's very, very delicate at this thickness. So to apply it, you take contact cement, you paint the piece of the cabinet where it's gonna stick and then you paint the back side of the veneer you let it dry for about 15 to 20 minutes until it gets really sticky and then you apply it with pressure. Once you get the piece on there and you've flattened it out and gotten all the air bubbles out, you can then take your router and you can route off any of the remaining material. The nice thing about wood veneer, once you have it on the cabinet, you can actually treat it like wood. 
So you can sand it down, paint it, or stain it like you would with wood. Before we can secure the front baffle, we have to get all the internal components together and inside the speaker cabinet. So I'm taking my crossover and I'm connecting the speaker cables that's gonna go to the tweeters, the speaker cable that's gonna go up to the woofers, and also the speaker cable that's gonna go back to the binding posts. One thing I love about these Dayton Audio crossovers is they actually mount them to a hardboard backing, which is great because all I have to do to secure it is put a layer of hot glue from a glue gun onto the base of my speaker and then press the crossover right to it to secure it. It's now time to apply the front baffle. So again, lots of glue lots of clamps, and a lot of drying time. So last step on the cabinets is to apply some barotheme for that finished look. So finally, it's time to install the drivers. This is pretty straightforward, except for when it comes to wiring those two 4 ohm woofers in series. So again, I wanted a nominal impedance of eight ohms on these speakers. So I've got two 4 ohm woofers. To wire them up, what you need to do is you take the positive lead coming from the crossover, you plug that into woofer one. And then you take the negative lead coming from the crossover and you plug that into the negative on woofer two. And then between the negative on woofer one and the positive on woofer two, you run a jumper. So essentially you kind of think of it like two four ohm drivers now acting as a single eight ohm driver. The last piece of this puzzle is to build out speaker stands. Now these are purpose-built speaker stands just for these speakers. And the main thing that really mattered to me is the ability to decouple the speaker from the stand and from the ground. So what I'm doing is I'm using speaker spikes and I'm actually drilling them into or embedding them into that speaker stand. So I've got a very low profile between the bottom of the speaker and the top of the stand. It kind of hides the speaker spikes. I think it gives it a really cool look. Well, that's it. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button and subscribe. Give me more fuel to make content like this. So now you're probably wondering, how do these speakers sound? So what I've done is I've prepared a bit of a sound demo between my Clips reference series, the set of Infinity Towers, and my new speakers. Now you're not gonna get a real sense of the sound stage or the transients or even some of that really nice top end clarity that I'm getting, but this comparison does do a decent job to give you somewhat of an idea of what I'm playing with here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you were inspired. <laughs>